Death Metal spans a quite large range of styles. But in the last 10 years, there's been a bunch of metal albums that have changed the game. You're wrong, Chris Barnes. Here are some of the best in modern death metal. Let's do it. This is a pretty saucy list, so we're gonna start off with <laughs> Cattle Decapitation's Death Atlas. This album is an unrelenting and powerful exploration of humanity's destruction of the planet. From the opening track, Anthropogenic, and Transmission, the band makes it clear that they are not holding back in their critique on humanity's role in the destruction of Earth and its inhabitants. Musically, Death Atlas is a tour de force of extreme death metal. The band's signature blend of death metal and grindcore is on full display here with punishing blast beats, frenzied guitar riffs, and Travis Ryan's notable savage vocals. One of the best. Definitely. However, the album also features some slower and surprising and more atmospheric passages that add depth and texture to the music, and that's what makes me love Death Atlas and makes me think that this album changes the game. Lyrically, Death Atlas is both bleak and thought-provoking. The band tackles a wide range of topics from factory farming to climate change and the decline of civilization. And the lyrics are often graphic and confrontational. Death Atlas is a stunning achievement for cattle decapitation especially. The band has never been afraid to confront uncomfortable truths, but they take it to a new level here, crafting an album that is both musically and intellectually challenging. Great choice, dude. I know that you've been spinning that one quite a bit, and dude, it is just a monumental record between the videos that came out that were really controversial because they were so graphic, and people are just like, what is this? It's, dude, Cattle Decapitation, you gotta listen to them. New album's gonna be sick. Oh, that was promised. This is an up and coming band that you actually turned me on to. Thank you with their debut record, which is still one of the best. This is another stunning piece from Hath. All oh, that was promised. Last year's pick was, dude, one of the best death metal records of the year. One of our favorites. They absolutely delivered. What more do we really need to say about this record? What more do we need to say about this band? They know how to unleash a fury, bring you down a little bit with that melodic prog inspired stuff, and then break you in half with some of the blast beats and the vicious black metal influences. But what I really like too about this band and in this this release in particular has got a lot of replayability. There's introspective feelings, which I really admire because a lot of death metal bands that try to to explore and navigate that atmosphere. It comes off a little wonky because they're trying to do like blood and guts along with it. And it doesn't really feel very genuine. This record feels genuine in its delivery of introspection matched with the brutality that Hath has been known to deliver. Dude, this is really like, I can't even classify this as like straight death metal. There's prog influences. There's black and metal influences. There's some sludge and post stuff in here. Dude, I still love spinning this record. This is one of the best modern death metal bands of the time. And all that was promised is just showcasing that. And it was all that was promised. Yeah, they promised me. Yeah, and I feel like you're, you, you called it Where Owls Know My Name Part 2. And I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of those vibes. So if you miss what Rivers of Nile is doing, love what Rivers of Nile is currently doing as well. But if you wanted a part two of that, you got to check this one out. This one will come as no surprise, but Arch Spire Bleed the Future. This album is a master class in technical death metal from the opening track, Drone Corpse Aviator, the band's virtuosic musicianship is on full display here. Their, their guitar work is honestly lightning fast, it's intricate, and the drumming is just frenetic and super precise. Oliver Ray Aleron's vocals too are just a blur of guttural growls and high-pitched screams. I don't know how he's a human being. <laughs> 
One of the standout features, though, of Bleed the Future is the sheer technical proficiency of the musicians. The songs are full of complex rhythms and tricky time signatures, lightning fast scales, but the band makes it all seem very effortless somehow and makes me want to quit guitar. The musicianship is awe-inspiring to say the least, and it's clear that the members of Archspire are among the best in the world at what they do. What sets Bleed the Future apart from other technical death metal albums, though, is the songwriting especially. Despite the complexity of the music where a lot of other bands would just get into full-blown wankery, this album is remarkably catchy and very memorable. Tracks like Bleed the Future and Scream Feeding feature infectious riffs and hooks that will just stick in your head forever. Lyrically, too, the band tackles some themes of, you know, existential dread, technical dystopia, the things you would want to have in a metal album like this. However, there is a sense of catharsis in the music that I appreciate coming from the post-rock side and the more chill metal side, and the band is exercising their own demons through their art, which is great. It's rare that you have an album like this that manages to be both technically impressive and emotionally engaging at the same time. So if you haven't heard this album for some reason, this one absolutely changes the death metal game. Monumental to say the least. They're not new and they're not doing anything new per se, but they have set the bar with Bleed the Future. Like way higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Australian tech death psychroptic. Are they marsupials? No, friends. It's two brothers and their mates, and they created one of the sickest fucking metal bands of our time. I actually have no idea how this band isn't huge. They have all the makings for an accessible yet extreme music group. Is it because they don't tour? I'm really not sure. Leave your thoughts down below if you know who this band is and you're wondering why they're not bigger either. It's crazy to think that this album that I picked here today, The Inherited Repression, is a decade old and still holds up as one of their finest. Yes, their last three albums have been fantastic, but there's still something really special about their... Here's an opinion alert. Magnum Opus, that is the inherited repression. The album is fucking insane with the craziest grooves and riffs that I've like ever heard. The guitar tone stands out as being a staple of their sound, and they really, really dial it in on this record. The fury of the drums and vocals matched with the melodic passages that are flying across the fretboards of the guitars and bass. Man, this record has everything I want and none of what I don't want in Tech Death. Here, I'm going to prove it. Play clip. Don't say play clip. Yes, like I said, Divine Council was fucking scorching. Love that record. But if you ever go over their entire discography from front to back, the inherited repression to me, it's always going to be the game changer. It's where the rubber met the fucking road and the band really found their footing in their own sound. Kudos to these masters. I love that they're still around and crushing it. Yeah, man. One thing that's cool, too, about their last couple records in particular is their the guitar tone is not very high gain. And that's on purpose, so you can hear those crazy runs super clear. Technically, this band is easily in the top five in death metal, yeah. and you guys need to listen to them. Mm -hmm. This album's amazing, Esoteric Malacology. This is a stunningly unique and creative take on death metal. From the opening track, War Squids, the band's signature blend of death metal and sludge is on full display here with pounding riffs, thunderous drums, and Matt Moss's guttural growls that I just absolutely love. However, what sets sludge? Apart from other death metal bands is their use of mollusk themed lyrics and imagery. Every song on esoteric malacology is infused with references like snails, slugs, and other slimy creatures, creating a surreal and otherworldly atmosphere. This record is packed to the shell with crushing riffs and intricate melodies. The guitar work is both heavy and melodic with moments of soaring beauty, but also interspersed with pure punishment and brutality. The rhythm section is tight and precise as hell, man, driving the music forward with a relentless energy. One of the standout tracks on the album is The Spectral Burrows. That's probably the best song on the record, in my opinion. Dreams. 
The song also showcases Moss's impressive vocal range with both clean and harsh vocals. Kind of a surprise, adding a ton of depth and texture to the music. This is a must listen for death metal fans who are looking for something that's truly unique and innovative and sort of changing the game. Huh, weird, why isn't on this list? That's why. Slugge have created a world of their own, man, filled with slimy creatures and crushing riffs. It's a world that's well worth losing yourself in. Yeah, you showed me these guys about the same time that you showed me Hath, so I always kind of put Slugge and Hath, like, together yeah and like i couldn't get like i couldn't ask for a better pair of death metal <laughs> bands to like live together in my mind dude like what a fucking crazy album that is man we need another album from this band mm -hmm. absolutely Another band with a ton of staying power that just gets overlooked for whatever reason. Blood Red Throne has owned the Norwegian death metal scene. Between 2003 and 2016, the band continued to hammer out full-length records, releasing seven albums in that span of 13 years. That's fucking crazy. I'm glad the band, however, let off the gas a little bit. They put out 2019's Fit to Kill, and then our highlight here today is 2021's Imperial Congregation. Holy fucking shit, bro. This record has everything I want, expect, and need from brutal death metal. In particular, this band. Devastating riffs, overwhelming ferocity, and vertebrae tearing grooves. Check out one of those riffs right now. There are hidden key changes in this record that keep it more on like the melodic side versus the gross dissonance that some of the other death metal bands on this list kind of lean into, which, you know, I can, you know, go either way. It kind of depends on the band. Blood Red Throne obviously does the blog thing very well. There's a couple underwhelming solos and half-baked technical sections that keep this record from being absolutely perfect. But dude, this is a death metal album that I've wanted from this band for a long time. Alter Genesis, when that came out, was Dumb. like... So fucking, I couldn't <laughs> stop spinning that record, yeah. dude. I couldn't stop spinning that record. The bass lines, the slapping parts, just it's so fucking unique and original. This is easily one of the best in modern death metal. Blood Red Throne, they're a name that anybody who considers himself a modern death metal fan, you gotta know. They're so fucking unique, highly in tune with their genre, their themes, and they have given us some of the best blood and gore splatter death metal themed shit in ages. Blood Red Throne is one of those death metal bands that just makes me go like this. Like all the time. <laughs> yeah. I just always have the stank face yep. on. I just and that's the ultimate compliment to a metal band. It if you is. were giving that face even 10% of the time, you know you're doing something yeah. right. Their whole their whole show is people going. Yeah, just it's utter insanity. <laughs> <laughs> Behemoths, the Satanists. This album is an epic and powerful statement from one of the most iconic death metal bands in the world. From the opening track, Blow Your Trumpets, Gabriel, the album announces itself with a grandiosity and intensity that is rarely matched in extreme death metal. The Satanist is filled with blistering riffs, thunderous drums, and Nurgle's commanding vocals. That's the best part, in my opinion. The album is a masterclass in the genre, with moments of crushing brutality balanced by more atmospheric passages that add a lot of depth and texture to the music and honestly this is my favorite behemoth album for a reason one of the standout tracks in particular is aura pro nobis lucifer which features hauntingly beautiful choirs and some of nurgle's most ferocious vocals in the, the entire discography <laughs> The song is a perfect example of Behemoth's ability to create a sense of grandeur and majesty even within the context of death metal. The only other band I consider that can top this really is Septic Flesh. This is its own thing entirely. I love the themes on this record, man, too. The deep vibes of meditation and spirituality alongside that death metal and nature of evil feel. The lyrics are often poetic, too, very introspective, with Nurgle exploring his own beliefs and experiences in a way that's both personal and 
universal. Behemoth have crafted an album here that is both musically and lyrically. Although I didn't connect with their latest record, The Satanist will always be tough to beat for me. In the blackened death metal category, this is really just a pinnacle album. It has those elements of that atmosphere of Satanism where, you know, like you said, meditative, occult sort of vibes blended with the brutality that Behemoth is known for. What a great pick, man. All right, you got a couple of different camps in the tech death sphere. You've got highly complex playing that requires very high levels of skill, which is what most of us tend to think of when we think of tech death. Then you have the less obvious tech-oriented groups that aren't as flashy or erratic, but they still pull off those crazy time signatures, the complex patterns, and are still able to deliver that slab of death metal we all need in our lives. Fractal Generator's Macrocosmos punished us back in January of 2021, easily remains as one of my favorite in the death metal genre. It is reminiscent of mid-era decapitated, where technical chops are put aside for riff worship and utterly devastating heaviness. There's still that technical flair with the apparent mastery of their instruments. At nine tracks and a total runtime of about 42 minutes, this record is perfectly paced. It leaves you feeling like you've been absolutely torn apart when it's finished, but like a great amusement park ride that makes you throw up. You want to go back on and then ride it again and again and again. Bands like these are exactly why I'm glad that we started Forge Master Metal Reviews. It's introduced us to timeless pieces that we can say, oh, I heard them back when they first came out. And we have evidence of it just to back it up in a court of law. Irrefutable evidence. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. We are not. We're tr we don't want to be gatekeepers here. This is just one of those bands that we discovered, and I wouldn't have known about had we not done this channel. No, the whole point of this channel is to get people listening to cool music. So, mm -hmm. if you have more cool music that changed the game, drop it down below. Be sure to do that. This album was on like every fucking year end list that we had last year mm. for good reason. And that's an abstract illusion. Whoa, this is a stunningly intricate and emotive album that defies easy categorization, but it definitely belongs on this death metal list that changed the game for a reason. The band's unique blend of progressive metal and heavy death metal, also post rock and electronic influences are on full display here. The album is filled with complex rhythms, soaring melodies, and unexpected expected twists and turns that keep us engaged from start to finish with that overwhelming brutality. The guitar work is extremely impressive with a wide range of tones and textures that add a ton of depth and nuance to their music. Lyrically, too, Woe is a meditation on the human experience. There are themes of loss and despair, of course, but also like redemption, which is a cool arc to throw in a metal album. The record is stunningly creative, and it's an emotive album that defies all kinds of genre barriers, but it is definitely a brutal death metal record at its core. Abstract Illusion have created a world of their own, man, filled with complex melodies and heartfelt lyrics, and it's a world that I still keep exploring. I haven't had an album blow my mind like this since I heard Blackwater Park by Opeth, and that's, I mean, it's been a long time. If you're a fan of progressive death metal and just looking for an album that will challenge your expectations and broaden your horizons, Woe is essential, man. I love the comparison to Blackwater Park because that was obviously an album that turned so many people's heads and just had the the Opeth just stand out and say, this is who we are and, and what we can do. And an abstract illusion has basically just kind of picked up the baton where that was left off because Opeth just kind of did their own thing and good for them. That's what they should be doing. They're talented enough. Yeah. But holy shit, an abstract illusion gave us something to chew on for decades. I'm obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> Still. This band has been a staple in the U.S. death metal scene, never shying away from their unique variation of sludgy, dissonant metal riffing. Their albums are bleak, often accompanied by an atmosphere more akin to like a post-apocalyptic wasteland than what death metal bands are typically giving us. This album in question, Acts of God, is fucking awesome utterly oppressive dude but it has its own unique quirks and layers that keep you coming back for more the most notable traits are the crazy intricate 
patterns contrasted by pulsing rhythmic percussion. These systems are pushed around the music and they almost feel like a tag team approach to assault your ears. Take a listen. Atonement 2017, Kingdom of Conspiracy 2013 are also very highly recommended. Dude, their whole fucking discography like is killer. When it comes to New York death metal, Immolation or the Kings of the Castle, they haven't leaned into that like hardcore slam thing that really made, you know, its way into the New York hardcore and death metal scene. They've always just kind of done their own thing, like in the vein of like that morbid angel, you know, uh, atmosphere, but they've done it better at this point <laughs> yeah i would say despite this band being an old school death metal band they have always pushed themselves in a way that stays true to the genre and acts of god i think changed the game in old school death metal sound here's this god amazing record <laughs> acts of god that you know death metal people can try to emulate but no one can good luck <laughs> Check out this tier list where we rank a bunch of great metal albums from 2023 that have released so far. Go with the gods, Forge Mates. May the Death Atlas be your map. 